Alright, I'm picking up in chapter 53, Care of Patients with Oral Cavity Problems, Disorders of the Salivary Glands. I'll start with acute sialodentitis. Um, acute sialodenitis is inflammation of the salivary gland from a decreased production of saliva. It's caused by infection, can be bacterial or viral, can be caused by irradiation or immunologic disorders. Staph, strep, and E. coli are common causatives for bacterial infections. Um, mostly affects the parotid or submandibular glands in adults. HIV can cause enlargement of the parotid glands that results from secondary infection. And Sjogren's syndrome causes the salivary and tear glands to become inflamed and results in dry mouth and dry eyes. Be sure to ask the patient about drug history and any systemic illnesses. Assess for pain or swelling over the face and assess cranial nerve 7 because the branches of cranial nerve 7 lie near the salivary glands. The patient can present with fever, malaise, and purulent drainage can be seen. We should offer hydration, warm compresses, and saliva substitutes can be used for these patients. Celagogs are lemons and citrus flavored fruit candies. Post irradiation celadenitis. Um, exposure to radiation can cause this. The patient suffers from zero stoma and it results within 24 hours of the therapy. Pain and edema can occur as well. Zero stoma can be temporary or it can be permanent. Salivary gland tumors are typically rare. They are slow growing, painless masses. They include facial nerve involvement such as weakness or paralysis. Note any asymmetry when assessing the cranial nerves. Parotidectomy or removal of the parotid glands is required for some individuals. Those undergoing the procedure are at risk for weakness or loss of the facial nerve because of the nerve's location to the gland. That concludes chapter 53. I will pick up in the next clip with the next chapter.